Hello, my friends. Have you ever wanted to make interesting, beautiful glitch art like this right here? Well, on today's episode of The Joy of Glitch Art, I'm going to show you just how you can make paintings like this with a few simple tools right in your own home. Uh, this is actually a video in my creative coding series for my creative coding class. And I'm showing them how to do, I'm showing you how to work through some different glitch techniques to work on your current project. Um, this is October, so we could also call this Glitchtoberfest, but I thought I would start with a Bob Ross uh, joke there and see how that goes. Um, so we're going to be making things like this, and I'll be going, taking you through several uh, different techniques for making um, glitch art. Not this one yet. Uh, I am, however, going to be using these tools right here. This is my palette. These are the things that you need if you're going to follow along at home with your uh, with my method as you do it, and again, anyone can do this. So these aren't very specialized tools, these are all free. Um, I'm on a Mac and so I'm using Hex Fiend, but you can use any other kind of hex editor you like. If you're on Windows, there are a different set of those. Um, there's one called Bless for Linux, if you have Linux. Um, Audacity is free audio editing software. Uh, GIMP is free image editing software. And in this case, GIMP is just gonna be used for checking our work and cleaning up a little bit. Um, but text edit is the other thing here. This is just a, a regular text editor. And uh, many other text editors would work for this. Um, I haven't tried any uh, in my own experimentation. Text edit was all I worked with, but it seemed to work okay. Uh, I think WordPad is pretty much an equivalent on Windows, so you might wanna try that if you have a Windows computer. Um, but as you'll see, it really doesn't matter that much. What we're doing with these tools is a technique called data bending, where we're going to use software not meant for editing images to actually edit some images and see what happens. So let's take a look and see what we can do. So I'm going to get back to Chrome. I had Chrome open. Uh, that was actually previewing the next episode that I'm gonna be producing after the data bending episode, um, which I've actually filmed. You don't know this, obviously, but um, I went ahead and I filmed this whole thing. I filmed 45 minutes of data bending, and then I realized my microphone battery was dead. So um, it's a lesson to always check your, uh, check your battery. So let's find an image that is, it's October, so let's find a nice autumnal image. And I do like this one. This is the one that I worked with on the last, um, the set of videos that no one will ever see because I didn't um, have my mic on. Um, so I'm gonna save this into a folder on my desktop called Glitchwork to make it easy to find. And I'm just gonna call this one original right now. Um, this is, I'm getting this from Unsplash because Unsplash, these images are free to use. They're public domain images. In this case, this one was made by uh, Jeremy Gal Galliani, uh, so thanks Jeremy. Um, and you can see the credit there, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and save it as original just so I can keep track of it. When you're doing glitch work, a lot of the work is trial and error, so it helps to make lots of copies of your files and um, just kind of have a place for all, just these files because there's gonna be, by the end of this video, uh, several files, and by the end of the series of videos, maybe a dozen different files. Uh, it's a lot to keep track of. So I don't need Chrome right now, so I'm gonna go, go ahead and close that. And the first tool I wanna show you is um, actually GIMP, even though GIMP is not, I'm not gonna be using it for data bending, I'm gonna use it just to find out a little bit about this image that I just downloaded. So I'm gonna open this with GIMP and see what I've got here. You can also do this with Preview if you have that um, on a Mac, and just that GIMP gives you a little bit more information uh, about it. Here we go. Um, so I already had this open in another one. Uh, but this is the image, and we can see here that it's 2,988 pixels wide, 4,480 pixels tall. It's a very large image, and it's a JPEG. It's three megabytes as a JPEG, but I'm gonna be converting this to a raw image format so I can glitch it, and when I do that, it's gonna become a much larger file in terms of memory size, and uh, that's gonna take a lot more time for the kinds of things I'm gonna do. So the first thing I wanna do is actually just reduce the file size here, and I'm gonna do that by just changing it here, going to image and then scale image for GIMP, a slightly different process for Photoshop, but you could do this in paint or even preview or anything that lets you edit image. There's nothing fancy about this. I just happen to use GIMP for this. So let's make it sort of, let's like make it 750 is still pretty big, um, but we'll go ahead and scale that down so it's actually uh, usable. You can see that's zoomed out. So if I zoom back into 100%, it's still a pretty big image and we still have some things to work with um, in terms of glitching. So now that I've converted that, I need to export that. And in GIMP, you change the file encoding as you export it by changing the file name. So as soon as that comes up, there it goes. Um, 
I'm going to name this original.bmp. BMP, I think it stands for bitmap, or it's a short version of it. At least I think of it that way. It's a uh, not quite raw, but a, a much simpler image format than JPEG. And I'll show you what I mean by that when I open it in a hex editor. So there we go. Uh, I'm done with GIMP for now, so I'm going to go ahead and close GIMP. So I can show you what I, I made with GIMP. I've got two files now, original.jpg, original.bmp. They're about the same size, but you remember the original.bmp uh, is much smaller because I scaled it down before exporting it. If I were to have made original.jpg at that size of BMP, it would probably be around 40 megabytes, which is a lot bigger. So taking a look at this file um, you know, in preview, it's the same file. Um, but if I open it in hex fiend, uh, I'm going to see a, a different way of viewing this file. Um, I wish things didn't pop up behind me like that. Maybe I should rearrange my blocking here. Um, well, it, it's, you can see it now. Um, so if I open this file, I'll first open uh, the JPEG file. This is not the one I'm going to glitch, but I want to show you what I see when I open this up. Um, a hex editor gives you uh, two views of the data of this file, just the raw bit by bit data of this file. And on the right, uh, on your right, we can see um, that data. Um, converted to ASCII format, and then on the left we can see it converted in, into hex format. Uh, depending on the file type, one or, one or the other may be more useful. Uh, but in this case for JPEG, we can see quite a bit of data that comes through uh, just as, as text, uh, starting with JFIF and then profo uh, the profile and then the RGB stuff. There's a lot of information at the top of a JPEG file that tells the computer how to, how to show the file, how to, how to display the file. Uh, it also encodes things related to your camera, if you ha your camera stores the images in JPEG format. But we don't want this, uh, because if we start messing with this and we break the header, uh, if we mess any of this data up right here, the file's not going to open. It's not going to work anymore. In fact, I'll go ahead and do that to show you what, what happens. So if I just sort of start, start deleting things here and then save that, uh, original.jpg. Yeah, the file original.jpg cannot be opened uh, because it's been damaged. So I can't see this file anymore. Uh, so I don't want to do that. I'm going to Command Z to get back to the beginning of this file, and that should put it back to being uh, usable again. Yeah, there we go. Um, so th there's, there's basically there's too much risk with the JPEG in this case. So I want to uh, close that, but take a look at this other one, the BMP file. There is a little bit of a header in a BMP file. It starts with those letters BM, and then it, and I think it's this this whole block about right here is a header. And maybe a bit further down. Just to be safe, I'm going to start down here when I start changing things. But um, it, it's a lot less to, to worry about. So to start changing things, this is where the glitching happens. And this is where you just get to try out whatever seems right and then see what happens. Um, I'm going to actually save this first as a different file name so I don't overwrite my original. That's, the thing that, that's something that happens pretty frequently if you're not careful. So I will call this uh, October um, Hex Fiend, just to kind of keep track of which um, technique I'm using. So now I'm editing not this file, but this file. And I can see that in the file, the window up here. So all I can do really here is I can just start moving chunks around. I'm going to do a lot of shift clicking to grab a big chunk. And then um, you, know, you can edit, cut, go like that, or and then edit, paste. I, I found in experimenting that you want to end up with about the same amount of data as you started with. So otherwise, you just get big gray spots. So um, I like to cut and paste. And I'm using my keyboard to do that quickly. So Command X to cut, and then Command V to paste. Um, you get like a really big chunk. And then you can do Shift click to select a large chunk like that, and then Command X, um, Command V. Yeah, kind of working my way through it. I'm going to try to go all the way down the file here. You can see it changes quite a bit. And actually, if you kind of were to sort of blur your eyes and look at it a certain way, you can almost make sense of the image uh, by looking at this data. OK, so I've made a lot of changes, just copying and pasting, moving things around. Let's see how that looks. Oh, neat. <laughs> OK. Um, yeah, that's a lot better than I expected, actually. I really like the purple and green, the way that that appeared out of nowhere, and the way that the uh, symmetry of the original, which kind of focuses on that the distant point here has kind of been replaced by this sort of near point because it just sort of wraps around. Basically, this image has been sort of shifted around you know, the back of it, basically, and comes in the other side to make this point like that. Uh, that's pretty cool. And I, I, I don't know, this kind of 
these converging, I don't know if I can line myself up, but these converging lines here are also really interesting. It just happened to, the, by the way, I shifted things around and then it got messed up with the color profile, so it ended up kind of pulling out these purples and greens. Um, that's pretty neat. Um, I could go in and do a, a few more changes like that, I, I guess, but I'm really kind of pleased with it as it is. Let me just get one more big chunk here from the, from the bottom and see if I can kind of bring some of that purple green weirdness to the top. Um, let's see what happens there. Uh, well, a little bit. I just added a tiny little bit there. It's really that, that section that's still kind of untouched. But maybe that's okay. I think with glitch images, often it's nice to have, uh, have some, some semblance of the original image there so you can kind of see what's been changed. Otherwise, if it's just chaos, that, that's not always as interesting. Um, okay, so that was a simple uh, data bending technique using HexFiend. There are other tools you can use for this, but that's just editing it and moving the text around back and forth to see what happens. And as it turned out, the result was pretty good. Uh, I want to show you some data bending techniques with Audacity in the next video. So I hope you'll come back and see me and, and see what you can do with uh, some more data bending um, in the next episode. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.